Do you guys remember the Facebook whistleblower? That lady which came out and confirmed every single Democrat talking point? That Facebook is creating extremists? That we need the government to step in and regulate people on social media? How can you allow citizens to talk with each other on the internet without the government listening in? I mean, that is very dangerous for our democracy. And that Facebook whistleblower was loved by all. I mean, she even got to write a book. People in the media called her brave. I mean, I don't know why exactly she was brave, because ever since she blew Facebook's whistle, there were no consequences. I mean, everyone liked her. Even Facebook liked her, surprisingly. And now we notice a different story with the Twitter whistleblower. All of a sudden, people are very skeptical. And they weren't skeptical about the Facebook whistleblower. No, like she spoke the truth. But here we have, look at this. Like I, I love this. You know, this gentleman, which literally has the Twitter logo over a British flag, may not be a very reliable witness. Apparently, a disgruntled ex-employee. Well, who do you think is going to blow the whistle? Like, is it going to be an enthusiastic current employee? Like, who do you think blows whistles at companies, man? Oh, maybe the press, you know, like uh, Lois Lane from the comic books. Like, she sneaks in. Twitter HQ in the middle of the night and gathers the evidence. Huh? Is this how whistles are blown? By credible sources. Obviously, like, look, the company is going to do PR control and they're going to do their best in order to discredit this person. And then, you know, like, oh, a lot of people, it's like, oh, it's, it's Elon Musk. Elon Musk is doing this. Uh, this person blew the whistle way before Elon Musk decided to make the deal. But again, like, facts don't matter, you know? It's now, what's interesting is that the things that were blown are the same things that I hear from developers working at AAA companies. And it's probably happening at other companies as well. It's just that I don't hear about it. But all of this is due to a culture of nepotism, a culture where they're using leftist ideology to justify what they are doing and thinking that this is normal. It's basically done due to HR deciding to empire build within companies. And it's very unprofitable. Let's put it like this. So look at this. No adequate oversight for employees. Senior executives cover up vulnerabilities. Executives mislead board and regulators. Like, I am being told that this is what's happening at AAA gaming companies. Like, they will come up from the marketing team. It's like, let's create an inclusive video game. And it's like, what the fuck does that mean? Let's put a woman without one arm on the box in our World War II game. That's going to sell. Right? And, and then you notice that the fans are upset. And the marketing team tells the executives, oh, it's just like a couple of disgruntled people on Twitter. Don't worry about it. And then, then it turns out that the game doesn't sell. Eh? Like they, they always cover it up. Like they will always say, oh, it's, it's anything but our ideology being pushed down people's throats. Like I remember when Han Solo movie dropped. I may be wrong with the titles, but, but like this was the case. It was a very popular movie. I, I, I'm pretty sure it was Han Solo. And it dropped in the same month with Deadpool. So Han Solo... Flops. It doesn't make a lot of money. And you see the apologia. It's like, oh, well, it, 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 it's due to Deadpool sucking up people. And I'm thinking, dude, this is Star Wars. It should be the other way around. Right? But the reason Han Solo didn't sell was due to the fact that the previous Star Wars movie was utter shit. Like, it, it was absolute garbage. So people were fed up with the franchise. So they decided not to give Han Solo a chance. But like the, the apologia, it's always everything besides the fact that the people working at the company fucking suck, are disconnected from the consumer, they don't know what's going on, and they use their ideology to justify their incompetence. It's like, oh, well, not, we're not making a profit, but we're changing the world for the better. We're, we're making an inclusive video game, we're promoting diversity, whatever the fuck that means. And, and then you see that people are tuning out, they're moving away. Now, the thing is, like, some companies are too big to fail, although I don't believe that is such a thing. I just think it takes a little bit more time, okay? And they keep lying to the executors. 
They, they, they keep telling them, it's like, oh, anything but our shitty marketing, any, anything but our ideology being stuffed down people's throats. They do not have the resources to know the true number of bots on the platform, and they are not reliably deleting user data. So what's more interesting is that uh, the same person points out that if you're wondering about uh, Twitter security being lapsed, it's just one person complaining. You might be interested to know that 18 months after I have been let go from the company, I have not been removed from their employees' GitHub committers group. So the problem with this ideology is that it promotes mediocre people. Uh, it's built on nepotism. Like they would rather hire someone with the correct ideology than someone that's competent. And what ends up happening is that, first of all, the, cu the customers, they get fed up easily. But what's worse than the customers getting fed up is that the company is now staffed with mediocre people. And the mediocre people aren't able to innovate. And more importantly, they're not able to have a functioning company. I mean, when you look at Twitter, the number of bots on the platform is absolutely fucking lutely disgusting. I am looking at YouTube as well, by the way. I, I find YouTube to be very fascinating. Like, you drop a gamer word, boom, stream is deleted, uh, demonetized, deranked. Like, they're, they're on the case. But when I go to my live stream channel and I look at the comments, I see bots using my name trying to convince my subscribers to click fishy links. I see bots trying to convince me to see some ladies' titties. That can't be fixed, apparently. Like, that, that is an issue that a platform doesn't know how to fix. Why? Because they, they have their priorities in order. Like, the most important thing is the sanitization of the platform, making sure that people do not make a joke that violates the speech of hate. And that's fine, right? But, like, when you have bots that are ruining the experience for people... That, that might infect people's computers if they click the link. Oh, that's a problem that they're struggling to fix. And on Twitter, the same. Like, the amount of bots is astonishing. Now, what I find interesting is that Elon Musk may still buy Twitter. Like, he said he doesn't want to, but he's being sued so that they try to force him to buy it. That's what the lawsuit is about, in case you don't know. So, I don't know why a lot of people say, well, Elon Musk isn't buying Twitter anymore. He can still lose the lawsuit. Because that, that, that's the, the funny part. You know, like, you have people like Thunderfoot going, like, hey, Elon Musk is never going to buy Twitter. It's like, okay, well, there, there's two possibilities. Number one, he's right about the bots. He wins the lawsuit, which means that morally he gets vindicated. Like, why would you buy a product that's not as advertised, all right? Like, only gamers do something so dumb. Or he actually loses the lawsuit, and then he is forced to buy it. For those of you who don't understand what that means... They literally take money off of his bank account, and then he owns Twitter. That's what it means he is forced to buy it. So it's going to be interesting to see. Or they can settle. I do think that they will settle, and I think like he's going to pay less than what was initially advertised. But it is my belief that Elon Musk is going to eventually own Twitter. Let me know what you guys think, though, and I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.